The process of cellular respiration is how a cell harvests the energy stored in carbon-carbon bonds, such as in glucose. This energy is converted into ATP, the energy currency of the cell that can be used in other reactions. Cellular respiration occurs in the cytosol and the mitochondria and is composed of four steps. Glycolysis, breakdown of pyruvate, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. The overall equation of cellular respiration for the breakdown of one glucose molecule looks like this. C6H12O6, or glucose, plus six oxygen molecules yield six carbon dioxide molecules, six waters, and energy in the form of ATP. We will cover all of the stages of cellular respiration in greater depth, beginning with glycolysis. Glycolysis consists of three phases containing 10 steps and occurring in the cytosol. The energy investment phase, steps one through three, the cleavage phase, steps four through five, and the energy liberation phase, steps six through 10. The energy investment phase starts with glucose and uses two ATP to create fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Two ATP molecules are hydrolyzed and their phosphates attached to glucose, converting it to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This raises the free energy of glucose and allows later reactions to be exergonic. In the cleavage phase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split into two G3P molecules, which prepares it for the energy liberation phase. In the energy liberation phase, G3P is converted to pyruvate, releasing one NADH and two ATP. This ATP is formed via substrate-level phosphorylation. Because there are two molecules of pyruvate created from every glucose molecule, the total yield of glycolysis is 2 pyruvate, 2 ATP, and 2 NADH. After glycolysis, the pyruvate products travel from the cytosol into the mitochondria, passing through membrane proteins into the mitochondrial matrix. This is where the breakdown of pyruvate occurs. The enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase transfers an acetyl group from pyruvate, shown in the blue box, to CoA. The rest of the pyruvate becomes carbon dioxide byproduct. To attach the acetyl group to CoA, pyruvate dehydrogenase removes a hydrogen from CoA. This hydrogen is then transferred to NAD+, creating NADH, which will be useful later in oxidative phosphorylation. Since two pyruvates are created from one glucose molecule, the products of breakdown of pyruvate are two carbon dioxides, two acetyl-CoAs, and two NADH molecules per glucose molecule. The acetyl-CoA molecules then proceed to the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, which also occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. There are many steps to the citric acid cycle, but we will only go over the main points. At the beginning of the cycle, acetyl-CoA loses its acetyl group to a four-carbon compound called oxaloacetate, producing a six-carbon citrate, hence the name citric acid cycle. After a few rearrangements, citrate loses one of its carbons, creating a five-carbon structure and carbon dioxide as a byproduct. This also adds a hydrogen to NAD+, creating NADH. This five-carbon structure then loses another carbon, creating another carbon dioxide molecule, another NADH, and a four-carbon structure. Modification of this new four-carbon structure releases enough energy to add an inorganic phosphate to GDP, creating GTP, which eventually will produce an ATP. Oxidation of this four-carbon structure will release two protons, which are transferred to FAD, creating FADH2. After a couple more steps, this four-carbon structure is modified to form oxaloacetate, in the process creating another NADH. The citric acid cycle ends here, as this oxaloacetate is the four-carbon starting material. Overall, the citric acid cycle creates 2 ATP via substrate-level phosphorylation, 2 FADH2, and 6 NADH per every glucose molecule broken down in glycolysis. In oxidative phosphorylation, high-energy electrons are removed from NADH and FADH2 that were produced in the previous stages. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs in two stages, the electron transport chain and the chemiosmosis. NADH and FADH2 are oxidized as electrons are removed and enter the electron transport chain, and ADP is phosphorylated to produce ATP in chemiosmosis. 
This process occurs on the inner mitochondrial membrane and uses several membrane proteins to transport electrons across the electron transport chain. First, NADH dehydrogenase oxidizes NADH to NADH+, releasing electrons into the dehydrogenase. The dehydrogenase utilizes some of the electron's energy to transport hydrogen ions across the membrane into the intermembrane space. The electrons are then transferred from NADH dehydrogenase to ubiquinone. FADH2 molecules, on the other hand, undergo oxidation in succinate reductase to become FAD and electrons are released to ubiquinone. Electrons are transported from ubiquinone to cytochrome B C1, where some of their energy is again used to pump protons into the intermembrane space, further increasing the proton concentration gradient. The electrons are then transferred to cytochrome C and finally to cytochrome oxidase. At cytochrome oxidase, electron energy is again utilized to transport protons across the membrane. In addition, the electrons are transferred to oxygen to produce water and to further increase the concentration gradient of hydrogen. In chemiosmosis, where the majority of the ATP created in cellular respiration is formed, the proton electrochemical gradient created via the electron transport chain is utilized to create ATP using the enzyme ATP synthase. In ATP synthase, hydrogen ions flow down their gradient into the mitochondrial matrix. The movement of hydrogen ions through the C subunits cause the Y subunit to rotate. This rotation causes a series of conformational changes in the beta subunits, which leads to the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Overall, the process leads to the formation of 30 to 34 molecules of ATP for each glucose molecule. The maximum amount of ATP is rarely produced because hydrogen ions, NADH, and FADH2 are used in other cellular processes as well. In summary, cellular respiration occurs in four steps. Glycolysis, breakdown of pyruvate, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. The breakdown of glucose in glycolysis, which occurs in the cytosol, creates two pyruvate molecules and two ATP molecules via substrate level phosphorylation. The subsequent breakdown of pyruvate, which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, produces two acetyl-CoA molecules, two carbon dioxides, and two NADH molecules. The citric acid cycle, which also occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, creates two ATP, two carbon dioxides, two FADH2 molecules, and six NADHs. Oxidative phosphorylation includes the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. In the electron transport chain, the hydrogen protons in NADH and FADH2 are removed and pumped into the intermembrane space, creating an electrochemical gradient. The energy of this gradient is then harnessed by ATP synthase to create ATP from inorganic phosphate and ADP in chemiosmosis. Protons in the mitochondrial matrix are removed by oxygen molecules producing water. Per glucose molecule, this process of oxidative phosphorylation creates 30 to 34 ATP. In total, cellular respiration produces 34 to 38 ATP for each glucose that is broken down. This leads us to the overall equation for cellular respiration. C6H12O6, or glucose, plus 6 oxygen, creates 6 carbon dioxide, 6 waters, and lots of energy. The energy harnessed from cellular respiration comes in the form of ATP, which is used to drive many cellular processes. We hope this video helped you better understand cellular respiration.